Hi, my name is Mary Wong and welcome to my Fertility Live post number 12. Today I'm going to be talking to you about um, fertility etiquette and how to respond when someone says bad things to you. So basically pe what people say, kind of like, oh gee, just relax and you'll get pregnant. Or um, someone said to me today at clinic where um, she went to a Thanksgiving dinner and family was there and a bunch of people were tapping her tummy and saying, oh, when is it going to be your time? So just really inappropriate things that people say and how do we deal with that? Well, um, the reason why I'm talking about this is because last week I had a patient that actually asked about um, that to be covered because um, in her scenario, she had a best friend that she went to visit and her husband, who she was kind of butting heads with, um, she didn't want to really ever talk to him about the fertility challenges. And as she was sitting there with a friend, he made a very inappropriate comment and it's like, it's hurtful and you don't even want to engage in that conversation because number one, you're not even close to the person. And number two, it's kind of like when you're going through fertility challenges, the last thing you want to do is to defend yourself or say, oh, gee, I'm hurt because you're already, um, for lack of a better word, feeling broken. And, you know, this conversation is really close to heart. So it's really difficult to talk about. So for those people that are going through it, I'll tell you how to navigate and people that are just watching that want to be supportive about this. I think it's really important to know how people are struggling that you don't even know are struggling, um, may not appreciate your comments very well meaning, but totally unintended. So I'd love to invite those of you that are on this to actually get to know and say, Oh wow, maybe I need to be careful with what I say and do. And that also goes for practitioners who are watching this evening. And I hope that you'll also take it to heart and bring it to your practice so that we are more empathetic. So for example, when a person miscarries, we don't say, oh gee, you know, at least she can get pregnant. And really what a person may want, I know for me when I went through it, I don't want someone to feel sorry for me or, um, or the false hope and say, oh gee, you know, better luck next time. Um, it's really more about just being okay with not being okay and sitting in that uncomfortableness. And as I always say, it's like when a person comes in with a negative result or if they're going to miscarry, um, it's about being with that and saying, you know what, I'm sorry this is actually really shitty and there's nothing I can do or say. So, but I'm here for you. Maybe that's more appropriate, right? So now back to, um, a person who is actually going through fertility challenges. What do we do? What do we say? So sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, the last thing you want to do is say anything and confronted by all this. And, um, so in the moment, if it's too much, you can just actually walk away and if it's in a social setting, perhaps even go home. If you're not able to do that, at least to walk away, go to the bathroom, take a couple of deep breaths. Maybe this is the time where you allow yourself to be sad or mad um, and just kind of recuperate on your own. Um, before you get into these kinds of situations, if you know that you're going to be in an environment that is non-supportive, maybe one thing that you can do is um, add in prepared response. So, you know, what are some of the most common things that people say that are inappropriate? As I mentioned before, it'd be something like uh, just relax or, oh, gee, maybe it's not for you. Um Oh, there's lots of uh, unwanted children in the world. Maybe you just need to adopt or uh, maybe it's not in your cards. Well, any of that is considered really not nice, right? So uh, refrain from saying that uh, for those that would like to say that as a supportive force and because it's not. 
And then for those that are in it, just know that some of these questions come up and can you or can you write a script and um, so that you know how to respond and deflect this? One teacher this evening that came to see me, she said, you know, one of the first things that parents say to her is, do you have children? And then she'll say no. And uh, instead of just having that be silenced, then she kind of deflects it by adding questions back to them. So if it's not, not someone that you really know, maybe you can deflect questions so that you don't have to deal with whatever the heck um, they're saying. So that's one thing. Um, so being having a, So again, having a prepared response or deflecting questions. And number two, I think, um, as I mentioned, when you, if you walk away and be sad in a corner or, you know, hold it together and then go home, allow yourself to just retract, let your body move through the sadness that can go on. And um, one way to do that, uh, short of emoting, is also physically writing and journaling it out so that instead of repressing these emotions that are pent up, which again, over time can induce stress. What we want to do is we release the stress. And as we know, or I'll tell you, so sometimes when we are going through a stress, it can actually impede our ability to conceive. So this way, when you let your emotions go and allow yourself to feel whatever you feel, which may not be so good in the moment, just know that um, getting the bottled emotions out will have your natural hormones respond better so ultimately it will help you conceive um, inevitably so the third thing i would want to do is add in community and what i mean by that is you know talk to someone that already knows about your situation who is empathetic so it could be your friend it could be a co-worker your spouse um another family member, anyone that really knows your scenario. And because guess what? I know that when I was going through it, I really did not have the heart or the time or the effort to want to confront anybody if they're saying the wrong thing. So it would kind of silence me and I'd walk away and emote. But what would be better is if you actually have another person at some point have a conversation and say, hey, this is not necessarily the best way to do this. And um, so then you are just out of that equation altogether. So that can be helpful. And at the end of this post, um, after it's gone through the live bit, I think what I'll do is I'm going to add in a link. There's a great little article from Resolve that talks, uh, and it's actually made for friends and family. And it's about what not to say to people. And eventually I'll write another post on it myself. But theirs is a pretty good one. So I'm going to add that link at the end of this live post. Um, so if there's anyone else that want to actually add in um, another way that you cope as you go through this uh, of people um, saying the unwanted things and how to respond with that, please add it in. And, um, yeah, well, okay, let me think. I think I have another thing here. All right, so I kind of mentioned this briefly, but I didn't really say it. Um, so instead of, let's say, you know, going to a baby shower where you know the talks of babies are going to be there, or even like a dinner party where, again, you know that there's a lot of conversation around baby, if you're not up for it, just graciously decline and just know that that's okay because why torture yourself through an event and um, just you yourself not being happy then and other people may see that too or faking it like that's just not really healthy for anybody and for yourself so I say just have some self-respect and self-love and not be tied to um, you know, guilt um, about having to commit yourself to events. When I say it's not necessary and you just give yourself an out and and say, you know, it's okay, I can miss this. I don't have to be there. And that also goes the same for even who you think is your best friend or best friends. Because if they don't really get your situation, 
if they're happy and they're in their own lives, you know, dealing with family and kids, it's hard for them to see outside of their space to really get where you are in your fertility journey. And um, certainly when a person has fertility issues, it's kind of like you're hiding it. So you're pretending you're okay. And meanwhile, inside you're like dying inside. So why suffer? And um, so I would say remove yourself from even like with your friends that are close to you, even if it's temporary, just to give yourself an out, to have a reprieve and to collect yourself, to be okay again. And, and there's nothing wrong in that. And it's not an indefinite situation. Um, certainly while you're going through, let's say like IVF process, um, all those kinds of tender hearted things, you might want to remove yourself from that point. Um, and um, I think that's it. I, I hope that I'm not missing anything. If I have, please let me know and you can PM me and um, let me know. But otherwise, join me, I think, uh, next week, Tanya. Oh, actually, speaking of Tanya, who is our um, uh, one of our colleagues and uh, traditional Chinese medicine practitioners and acupuncturists at a lot of holistic health where we work, she was saying, um, you know, when someone says the wrong thing, you give them the, what does she call it? The double middle finger. Like, so this is what you want to do, but of course we're not going to do that. And um, I've never wanted to do that, but certainly I wanted to go punch them in the face and when I was going through it. And thankfully I didn't do that and I don't suggest that you do that, but simultaneously um, have those kinds of things um, in your uh, toolbox to kind of help yourself. So again, just to reiterate, so number one, uh, writing things down, journaling. Uh, number two, removing yourself from the situation. Um, and even if it's escaping during the time, uh, like going to the bathroom, um, and then other way is to actually completely um, avoid those kinds of scenarios where you may be caught up in that. Number four is um, write down in advance questions that, or, or um, yeah, questions or remarks that people would say that really would piss you off and see if you can have a good comeback now. Write it down and then maybe rehearse it if you have the time and effort to do that. And otherwise just journal and like get mad on paper. Or, you know, sometimes you can even use like a, they used to have, um, at least when I was growing up in the 70s, 80s, they had these fake foam bricks and you can like use them and, and, and like get your aggression out that way. And then of course, short of that, and I have to plug in for our profession here, you know, do some acupuncture, get stress relief because we know that works for that too. And uh, going for walks and doing some kind of um, connecting with nature um, other kinds of exercises okay so that's it for this evening and next week please join me because I'm going to talk about um, the basal body temperature and what it is how we as TCM and holistic practitioners are able to read it but yet also simultaneously how to navigate that without totally stressing yourself out and, si and simultaneously you know when we actually give it up all right, and also I'm going to plug in now. Um, check out my website, which is maryong.life, and my book is called Pathways to Pregnancy, um, Personal Stories and Practical Advice for Your Fertility Journey. So you can get that on Amazon, Chapters, and um, Barnes & Noble, any bookstore near you, the library, just go get it, read it. It's good for anyone. And lastly, uh, continue uh, going through my Facebook page, Mary Wong, RTCMP. Like my page, check out my posts, make lots of comments, and also um, let me know what you would like to hear for my uh, future live posts, and I will totally do that. And again, we'll see you next week. All right, have a great night. Mwah. And oh, thank you for the thumbs up.